Coffee Break Italian, Season 3, Episode 25. Buongiorno a tutti, benvenuti a Coffee Break Italian. Io sono Mark. Salve a tutti e io sono Francesca. Come stai Francesca? Benissimo Mark, grazie. E tu? Molto bene e molto contento perché oggi stiamo ancora parlando del congiuntivo. Sì, sì, sì. Abbiamo fatto parecchi episodi dedicati a questo punto grammaticale un po' speciale. Un po' speciale e anche importante. Sì, 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 ma spero che ti sia piaciuto. <ride> ah, sì, mi è piaciuto molto. Spero che ti sia piaciuto. There we've got the subjunctive of an auxiliary verb and a past participle. Which gives a perfect subjunctive esatto. in many ways, because today we're talking about the perfect subjunctive and the pluperfect subjunctive. Sì, esatto. We are going to see both compound tenses that we have in the subjunctive today. Perfetto. Allora, bando alle ciance. Sì, diamo inizio alle danze. Allora, Mark, as we mentioned in the introduction today, we are going to see the two compound tenses that we can form uh, in the in the subjunctive mood. So when we say compound tenses, these are tenses that use an auxiliary verb, avere or essere, sì. and then a past participle. Sì, esatto. And there are two in Italian, eh, congiuntivo passato e congiuntivo trapassato. So we know already the passato, which, which is what we use for the, uh, for the perfect tense, esatto. the passato prossimo. Sì. And then the trapassato is the pluperfect, so it's congiuntivo trapassato, the sì. pluperfect subjunctive. Excellent. Esatto. Uh, I, I, I would like to reassure our listeners and say that uh, uh, there is nothing really new here because we are still like uh, uh, operating within the the same logic that we have discussed in the previous uh, episodes so like the triggers remain the same the conjunctions everything that we have said about the the subjunctive still applies uh, uh, when it comes to these two new tenses And the great thing about this is, of course, that having learned already the present and the imperfect forms of our auxiliary verbs sì. in the subjunctive, we already know how to form the sì. trapassato and the passato, the congiuntivo passato and the congiuntivo trapassato. Esatto, we don't really have to learn anything new in terms of uh, how to form uh, these two tenses. Okay, so let's get straight into this then. Ok, allora, um, let's start from the eh, congiuntivo passato, ok, so from the, the perfect subjunctive, and uh, um, we can maybe have a look first at the, the formation mm -hmm. of this tense and then uh, see some examples. Ok. Ok, so if we take um, a normal uh, are verb like mangiare, which takes uh, avere as an, an auxiliary, mm -hmm. We can then form the congiuntivo passato. So if we take then our subjunctive of the auxiliary verb avere and combine that with the past participle of mangiare, we get abbia mangiato. Sì. Abbia mangiato, abbia mangiato. Esatto, tre volte, because we know that it's the same uh, uh, form in the present. And then abbiamo mangiato. Sì. Abbiate mangiato. Sì. Abbiano mangiato. Perfetto, Mark, molto bene. So, for example, I could say, I hope that you all have eaten the spaghetti. Sì, spero che voi abbiate mangiato gli spaghetti. So, again, we're using spero che as a trigger, and that means whatever follows is going to be in the subjunctive. And if we're saying, I hope that you have eaten the spaghetti, then it has to be a perfect tense. Perfetto. What happens if we use a verb which normally requires essere as an auxiliary instead, for example, andare, tipico. Tipico, sì. Allora, in that situation, we're going to use essere, of course, in the present subjunctive as our auxiliary verb. So it would be sia andato or andata. Sì. For the, the three first ones. Sì, tre volte. <laughs> then siamo mm -hmm. andati or sì. andate. Esatto. And then siate mm -hmm. andati or andate. Sì. And then siano. Andati or andate. Perfetto, bravissimo, Mark, molto bene. 
So following on uh, the example you have just given, Mark, how would you say, I hope you have gone to that restaurant? So I hope that you have gone. Um, that is going to be using Andare in the perfect tense. And of course, it's because it's following spero okay, we have to put it into the perfect subjunctive. So spero okay, che siate andati uh, what did you say? In quel ristorante. In quel ristorante, sì, sì, to sì. that restaurant, in quel ristorante. Esatto, perfetto, molto bene, Mark. I think we can have a, a look also at the trapassato or the blue perfect just mm-hmm. now. So we have a, a clear picture of all the four tenses. So basically the same uh, uh, logic applies to the trapassato. The only difference is that the auxiliary is going to be in which tense. <laughs> It would then be in the imperfect tense. Molto bene. Let's just review the imperfect subjunctive of avere and essere. So, for example, with avere, it would be avessi, avessi, avesse, Mm -hmm. avessimo, aveste, avessero. Perfetto, molto bene. So there we have to remember that the io and the tu form are avessi, and then the lui, lei, and uh, lei formale would be avesse. Perfetto, molto bene. What happens with essere? Eh, essere abbiamo fossi, fossi, fosse. So again, the third person singular is slightly different. Fossimo, foste, fossero. So again, we're going to combine these with other verbs using the past participle. So for example, I hoped in the past sì. that you had eaten the spaghetti. Oh, <laughs> speravo che avessi mangiato gli spaghetti. Okay, so this time, now we've changed the, the, the person here. It's not that you all had eaten the spaghetti, it's you singular, mm-hmm. avessi. So, speravo, I was hoping, or I hoped, che avessi mangiato gli spaghetti, that you had eaten the spaghetti. Uh-huh. Okay, and uh, what would the other one be? <laughs> Speravo che fossi andato o andata in quel ristorante. So I was hoping, I hoped that you had gone to that restaurant, but it turned out that you didn't. Sì, that is sì. quite often what's going to happen here. Sì, sì, um, sì. But we'll come across more examples of that. So I think, Mark, without even really explaining what these two tenses are about, I think from your examples it was quite clear what their function is. <laughs> yes, so basically they're expressing an action that happened before the one in the main clause. Sì. So I was hoping, main clause, that you had gone to that restaurant and that, that gone to the restaurant happened before me hoping. Esatto, esatto. So we can have uh, the, the action of hoping in the present, so spero che, and the action of going in the past, spero che tu sia andato. Mm-hmm. But we can also have the action of hoping in the past, speravo, and the action of going even before that time in the past, speravo che fossi andato. That's why we need to tenses to express the same idea but in different uh, moments. Esatto. Francesca, can we look at some further examples, perhaps changing from spero che or speravo che? Um, let's do penso che because that's another common uh, trigger. Okay, ad esempio, penso che Anna abbia già preparato il pranzo. Okay, so you're thinking now, penso che Anna abbia già preparato il pranzo. So, abbia preparato. That's our sì. perfect subjunctive. Mm-hmm. So, I think now that Anna has already prepared lunch. Esatto. And that preparing was in the past. Sì, it happened before me starting yeah. to think about it. Okay. So, let's compare that against how that would work in the present. Yes, in the present we would just say, penso che Anna prepari il pranzo. And in that case, she's not yet prepared lunch. Yeah, or maybe she's she's just started or she's going to prepare it soon. Yeah, so penso che Anna prepari il pranzo. I think that Anna is preparing lunch. Exactly. So the, the trigger is the same. The main clause is the same, is penso che. Mm-hmm. But then the action which is triggered by pensare can be different depending on when it takes place in, in the time. <laughs> Okay, let's look at the trapassato then. Okay, uh, using the same sentence, so we can compare all the tenses, we can say, pensavo che Anna 
avesse preparato il pranzo. Right, so let's analyze here what's going on. Pensavo che, so this is I was thinking, I thought that Anna avesse preparato il pranzo so that she had prepared the, the, the lunch. So I thought that Anna had already prepared the lunch, mm-hmm. perhaps earlier that day or maybe sì, even the day before. Sì, esatto. And again, if we want to compare it with the congiuntivo imperfetto, then we would say, pensavo che Anna preparasse il pranzo. So in that situation, I thought that she was preparing lunch because it was happening uh, at the same time in a sì, sense. Sì, so simultaneously in a way, but yeah. in the past. Mm-hmm. And that's the past version of I think that Anna is preparing the lunch. Sì, sì, sì. Okay, there are a couple of other things that we need to mention here. Yes, uh, because in the previous episode, uh, we introduced the idea of um, the conditional, the present conditional in the main clause, uh, triggering the imperfect subjunctive, which doesn't really have uh, uh, a past function, but it's just the way uh, Italian works when it comes to having the conditional in the main clause. So give us an example of that to remind eh, us. Sì, ad esempio, um, vorrei che tu mi spiegassi la situazione. So, again, this is one of these situations I would like that you explained to me, mm-hmm. but I would like you to explain the situation. Okay, and spiegassi refers to now, now to the yeah. present, although it's a, an imperfect subjunctive. Now, if we think of this sentence, but... Um, but with the idea of past, so that I would like you to have explained uh, this uh, to me, then the the verb spiegare, the verb to explain, in Italian needs to go in the pluperfect. Yeah, so let's think about this, because it is a little complicated. It's a little complicated. I would like, so right now, I would like you to have explained, not you uh-huh. to explain, but that by this time, by the time we got to this moment, I'd like already to know what the situation was. So I'd like you to have already explained the situation by now. Uh-huh. So vorrei che tu avessi spiegato la situazione. Sì, o mi avessi, mi avessi spiegato. spiegato sì. sì, bravissimo. So there we've got our trapassato, uh, congiuntivo trapassato, our, uh, imper- our pluperfect subjunctive. Sì. And it's triggered by this vorrei che. And the reason that is the pluperfect is going back a stage is because we're already back a stage in, in, in Italian anyway, because otherwise in normal circumstances it would be che tu me, mi spiegassi. Sì, so the, the, the key idea is when we have a, a conditional in the main clause, if this, the action happens at the same time, we use the imperfect subjunctive. If it happened before... We use the pluperfect subjunctive. We have these two options. Perfetto. And I think we're going to hear this in yes. our conversation. Aha, <laughs> sì, sì, sì. And the same applies to magari, which mm. again we discussed in the previous episode. Yeah. So I could say, oh, magari tu mi spiegassi sempre tutto. Yeah. I, if only you explained everything to me all the time. Aha. Uh-huh. Ma magari mi avessi spiegato tutto. So if only you had explained everything to me. Esatto, perfetto. Okay, now is there anything else we need to know? Uh, maybe the last thing, probably it's already kind of clear to our listeners, but just remember, as always, if the subject of both clauses is the same, we don't want to use the subjunctive, we want to use the D with an infinitive. But when it comes to um, the congiuntivo passato and trapassato, we must use a past infinitive. So give us an example of this. Allora, penso di aver capito bene il congiuntivo. Okay, I think that I have understood the, conju- the subjunctive well. Uh-huh. Okay, penso di aver capito bene. So, avere capito bene, we could say it also. I think, I, I think to have uh, understood the subjunctive well. Okay, sì, sì. Okay. So, the congi- the, sorry, the past infinitive in Italian is basically essere or avere with the usual idea which kind of verbs take essere and which take avere and the past participle. And just watch that if it is an essere verb, that past participle still needs to, to agree. 
Sì, 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 oh, ovviamente. And it's quite common to find the shorter forms, esser and aver, because they just sound better in the, uh, in the past infinitive that way. Okay. We will probably hear some of these in our conversation, which is just coming up after the break. In addition to the podcast version of Coffee Break Italian Season 3, we are also putting together a full course on the Coffee Break Academy, where you'll be able to access bonus materials to help you make even better progress with your Italian. That's right. Not only will you be able to enjoy an ad-free audio version of each lesson, we'll also provide a bonus episode in which we'll go through every detail of the dialogues and a third episode for each lesson in which Francesca will be testing us with some translation challenges based on the lesson topic. Of course, there are comprehensive notes and a video version of each lesson too. Visit coffeebreakitalian.com and follow the links for Season 3 there. Bentornati, oggi stiamo parlando del congiuntivo passato e trapassato. Sì, è vero, bravissimo, Mark. And we're going to be listening to a conversation. Tell us about the conversation, Francesca. This conversation is un colloquio di lavoro, a job, a job interview. interview. Okay. Sì, esatto. <laughs> And uh, this interview is for uh, Carlo, Carlo Grassi, who is uh, uh, talking to uh, the big boss, I suppose, <laughs> <laughs> la dottoressa Rocchi. <laughs> okay, let's have a listen. Prego, si accomodi. Piacere, sono la dottoressa Rocchi. Piacere, Carlo Grassi. Grazie per essere venuto al colloquio oggi, il suo curriculum è molto interessante. Temevo che non vi fosse arrivato, avevo quasi perso le speranze. Il processo di selezione è sempre molto lento, comunque siamo felici che lei abbia fatto domanda per questo lavoro. Il piacere è mio. Immagino che abbiate ricevuto molte candidature. È un posto di lavoro davvero allettante. E che cosa le piace in particolare di questo lavoro? Innanzitutto ammiro la vostra etica professionale e i valori su cui si basa l'azienda. Questo mi lusinga molto. Sa che abbiamo appena lanciato una campagna per raccogliere fondi destinati alla costruzione di una scuola in una zona colpita da un terribile terremoto. Oh, non sapevo che aveste lanciato questa campagna. Che idea fantastica! Spero che abbiate già ricevuto qualche offerta. Sì, pare che la gente sia stata molto generosa in queste prime settimane. Incrociamo le dita. Ma passiamo al suo curriculum. Vedo che lei ha appena lasciato il suo lavoro di responsabile marketing per una grande multinazionale tedesca. Sì, a dire il vero è stata una cosa un po' strana. In pratica, questa società mi ha offerto un lavoro e io ho accettato. Dopo un mese, quando tutti i miei colleghi hanno ricevuto lo stipendio, io non ho ricevuto niente. Pensavo che ci fosse stato un errore. Invece ho scoperto di essere stato assunto come stagista. Cosa? E sì. A quanto pare, loro credevano che io avessi capito, anche perché, stupidamente, ho firmato il contratto senza leggere tutte le clausole. Ma signor Grassi, non si firma un contratto senza leggere le clausole. Eh, ora lo so. Magari qualcuno me l'avesse detto prima. Non ci pensi più, è acqua passata. Noi abbiamo esaminato con attenzione il suo curriculum e ci sembra che lei abbia accumulato una serie di esperienze lavorative davvero interessanti. Sì, in effetti ho svolto diversi lavori ed è probabile che ognuno di questi abbia contribuito a formarmi sia come persona che professionalmente. Mi piacciono molto le sue risposte, sa? Lei si distingue perché nei colloqui precedenti mi sembrava che tutti i candidati avessero memorizzato delle risposte standard. Oh no, io non potrei mai. Sono una persona troppo spontanea. 
Sì, ed è proprio quello che cerchiamo qui alla Rocky S.P.A. Senta, immagino che in questo periodo lei abbia fatto diverse domande di lavoro e abbia ricevuto molte offerte, ma vorrei che considerasse con attenzione la nostra proposta. E cioè? Un contratto full time a tempo indeterminato. Mi sembra un sogno. Ci pensi, lega bene le clausole del contratto e poi ci dica qualcosa. Non c'è fretta. Mi consideri pure uno di voi. Allora, benvenuto a bordo, signor Grassi. Well, that seemed to go well for, for uh, Carlo. Speriamo, in bocca al lupo. <laughs> okay, so what has happened in this conversation? Obviously, we'll go through it in detail in our bonus episode, but can you give us a little bit of a summary now? Sì, we have just met la dottoressa Rocchi, who is interviewing Carlo, uh, and he seems to appear like a, a strong candidate with, a, with an impressive CV. Yeah, he was a bit worried because I think it took a while for the company to invite him to the interview. Um, but normally the selection process takes quite long. See, and uh, Carlo seems happy and uh, he likes the, the company's work uh, ethics and, and values, which is great. <laughs> yeah, the, the director mentioned a, a campaign that they had just launched. What, what was the campaign? It's a campaign to raise funds in order to build a school in, a, in an area hit by an earthquake. Mm -hmm. And they've, they've made some... some... Well, they, they have received some considerable donations at yeah, this point. Yeah, so far so good. good. <laughs> uh, then they move on to discuss uh, Carlos' uh, CV. Yeah, he's just left a role working in a German multinational company. Yeah, he was in charge of marketing. And uh, the reason why he left is because he was given a contract as, a, as an intern. <laughs> yeah, but then... He did something a little bit silly, didn't he? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he signed the contract without reading it. Mm, molto male. <laughs> <laughs> And he only realized that because basically he didn't get a salary at the end of the, of the month. <laughs> Oops, yeah, definitely is worth reading the contract. <laughs> <laughs> sì. The director tells him to, to be more careful next time. But um, the director, the dottoressa, also says that his CV looks interesting uh, given all his previous work experiences. Yeah, and Carlo agrees. He says that his previous jobs have, have shaped him as a person, but also professionally. Oh, it sounds very deep. <laughs> Absolutely. Good interview, interview language. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yes, uh, la dottoressa Rocchi uh, stresses how much she likes uh, Carlos' answers, which um, as compared to those of other candidates, uh, don't look as if they were learned by heart, memorized, basically. Yeah, because Carlos says he's a, a spontaneous person. Oh. <laughs> and uh, in a sense, that's exactly what the director is, is looking for. And uh, there is good news uh, in the end for, for Carlo. <laughs> That's right, he gets a full-time permanent contract. Eh, congratulazioni, Carlo. <laughs> uh, but the, the, the director, la, la dottoressa Rocchi, uh, suggests that he takes uh, uh, his time and reads through the contract before, <laughs> before signing it or accepting it. <laughs> yeah, although he decides to accept it there and then, so I really hope he's getting paid this time. <laughs> È troppo spontaneo. Speriamo <laughs> che, <laughs> che riceva lo stipendio e sì. che... <laughs> and that he read the contract. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, now that's almost it for this episode, but of course there's time for ancora una cosina. Yes, bravo Mark, come sempre c'è ancora una cosina, and la cosina di oggi è collegata a quello che ha fatto Carlo. <laughs> allora, cos'è? Carlo, quando ha firmato il primo contratto, pensava che fosse un contratto vero e proprio. Invece era un contratto per un ostegista. Mm -hmm. Quindi eh, si dice in italiano che Carlo ha preso lucciole per lanterne. So he took lucciole, una lucciola? Sì, le lucciole sono quegli animaletti. Fireflies, sì, yeah. Sì, sì. <laughs> so he took a firefly for a lantern, for a sì. light. So he mistook a, a firefly for a light. Um, because he got confused. Basically. Esatto, esatto. So when we think that something uh, is 
what what we have in mind, but it turns out to be something completely different. And there is like a confusion because of that. We say, uh, prendere lucciole per lanterne. I like it. I like it. <laughs> sì. I guess it's a little like the English expression to bark up the wrong tree or to be barking up the wrong tree. Sì, sì, direi, direi di sì. Penso che sia più o meno la stessa cosa. A little bit different perhaps, but yeah, it's, it's linked in. It's always nice to have some kind of English idiom to link to mm-hmm. an Italian idiom. So that's right. So prendere lucciole per... Lanterne. Prendere lucciole. Lucciole. Sì, per lanterne. Prendere lucciole per lanterne. Ok. Molto bene. Ok, Mark, direi che è tutto per questo episodio. Questo era l'ultimo episodio sul congiuntivo vero e proprio. E devo dire che sono contenta perché penso che tu abbia capito proprio bene il congiuntivo. Anch'io penso di averlo capito. Mm Sebbene questo episodio... Sia stato Bravo. impegnativo. No, bravissimo, bravissimo. Lo so, lo so. Non è l'argomento più facile, ma piano piano. E ovviamente spero che i nostri ascoltatori non si siano stancati troppo. Anzi, <ride> al contrario, mi auguro che si siano divertiti come sempre con noi. <ride> Sicuramente. So many subjunctives in that last, <ride> that last sentence. Lovely. Ok, let's leave it there. We'll be back soon with more. Or Coffee Break Italian for you. In the meantime, grazie molte e arrivederci. A presto, ciao ciao. You have been listening to a Coffee Break Languages production for the Radio Lingua Network. Copyright 2022, Radio Lingua Limited. Recording copyright 2022, Radio Lingua Limited. All rights reserved. <laughs>